Welcome to The God Room with Danny Hobble. Danny's art ministry has touched millions of people around the world. For the past four decades, Danny has shared his talent by spreading the Word of God through art. Join us now as Danny shares his inspiration behind the talent in The God Room. The God Room is not so much a physical place as it is a spiritual place. It's where we spend quiet time with the Lord. Quality time alone with God is what the God Room is all about. Let me share with you what he has shared with me. Hello, I'm Danny Halbaum, and this is my lovely wife, Diana Halbaum. Hi, we welcome you so, today. Yeah, and we were just um, thought we'd let you know about it. We have a new um, show coming up. It's called The God Room. And I know it sounds like, oh, it's a, you know, a place with a whole bunch of um, statues and whatever, you know, the God Room. It's not really that. The, the reason that uh, we titled it The God Room is because it's where we spend alone time with the Lord. And that's really important, sparing the alone time with the mm -hmm. Lord. And you've shared a lot in that as well. I mean... Yeah, it's, uh, I think our whole, the whole point of us being on earth is to have that intimacy and fellowship with God. Exactly. I yeah. think, you know, He created us for fellowship with Him. And so everything that we do revolves around that one-on-one -on -one time with Him and how much He longs for us to set that time aside and to truly just focus on Him, not only um, with our, our ears open, but our eyes and that He can touch our senses and we can truly become a part of Him and get to know Him on a deeper level. Right. I mean, that's, you know, there's nothing more important than your relationship with the yes. Lord. I mean, I've I walked, for the, worked, uh, walked with the Lord for a long time um, and I, I believed in, in the gospel, I believed that, that the Lord was my Savior, but I just didn't have that full connection with God, mm -hmm. not until the last part of my life. And I mean, since then, I mean, it's just been a totally different uh, relationship, a totally different walk with the Lord. I mean, it's closer. You know, before it's almost like mm -hmm. being religious. It's like, well, you believe a certain thing and you know, you follow those steps and you try to do the best you can and, yes. and you think that you're being good with God. But God is just saying, well, that's all well and good, but, you know, what about me, you know? I want to be associated with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, whenever I, whenever I try to think about uh, God and what He's like and what He wants, what He doesn't want, I mean, I always picture it as like a, um, a child and their father. You know, and you know, if if you're a parent, I mean, it's nice that your kids, you know, try to please you, and it's nice that they, you know, do things for you, and you appreciate it, and you think it's cute, and you yeah. you love them for it. But the main thing you want with your kids is you want that that quality time with them. You want to touch them in their heart, mm -hmm. not just you know in their head. And that's pretty much what what the God room you know, has meant for me right. is that, you know, that connecting with God. And a lot of times it's, I mean, sometimes I'll go in there, you know, and I'll just sit there for sometimes minutes and I don't say anything and I don't hear anything from the Lord. It's just spending quiet time with Him. And then at some point, you know, I'll, I'll start hearing from Him. And it's not like, you know, we hear a, a voice booming in the room and, you know, yes. the walls mm -hmm. shake. It's the voice is always, you know, it's, it's a voice inside you, you know, that speaks out to you and you know that it's from the Lord, that it's mm -hmm. not from your head speaking, you know, that it's coming from with you. And, you know, that's the, um, the, the voices that we hear from God. And usually he's telling me different things. Um, um, you mentioned voices. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, when we have quiet time with the Lord, it's so important to have that true quiet without the distractions around mm -hmm. because through the day we are seen bombarded with a lot of voices oh yeah voices from the media voices you know that are that are our heads uh, some are negative some are positive 
but until we spend that quiet time with the Lord and he can renew our mind in that time and a lot of times when I go in there I ask him to cleanse my mind and and get rid of all silence those other voices right. oh yeah so that I can truly hear him so because we are so bombarded with voices um, we really need that quiet time every day so that we can begin to hone in on the voice of God right. and he can counteract the counterfeit the things that are coming against us so that's that's important well and you know the the world actually has a name for that they call it monkey chatter yeah. And, you know, that, all that means is, you know, your, your mind is constantly thinking. You're thinking about mm -hmm. what I'm going to wear today, what I did yesterday, what am I going to do tomorrow, and, mm -hmm. you know, your mind just goes crazy. And, you know, I've, I've matter of fact, I, um, a lot of times the Lord would give me visions of paintings that he wanted me to paint. Mm -hmm. And usually, for some reason, I always used to come up around 2 o'clock in the morning. Yes. And... You know, I'd, I'd, I'd get up, and I used to have a, a board up on the wall. And what I would do is, you know, when the Lord woke me up and he gave me a vision of something to paint, I would go, oh, would get up in the middle of the night. You know, you were there. Oh, yeah. And I'd get up in the middle of the night, and I'm half asleep, and I'd, I'd write down, you know, the things that, that the Lord just showed me in a vision so I wouldn't forget about it. And then I'd go back to sleep, and then I'd get up in the morning and look, and I'd go, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that, and go ahead and paint the whole thing. And, you know, this goes, went on for quite a while. And finally, it was one night, and the Lord woke me up, and he gave me this vision. I don't even remember what it was. It was some painting to do. So I, I get up, and I, I said, okay, Lord, and I write all the things down. And I come back to bed, and I'm trying to go back to sleep. And as I'm going back to sleep, I'm still talking to the Lord, and I'm going, you know, Lord, I, I don't mind it. You know, and matter of fact, I'm, I'm privileged that I can, that you've called on me to go right. do this stuff. And, you know, I'll do the painting for you, and I'm happy. You know, thank you for, you know, mm. giving that to me that I could share the world. But I said to him, I said, Lord, why 2 o'clock in the morning? You know, if, if, you, if you tell me in the middle of the day, I'll still do it, you know. So, you know, why do I have to... You know, why wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning? Mm -hmm. Tell me in the afternoon. I'll still do it for you. And again, that little inner voice that you hear inside you, I heard him say, because it's the only time you shut up and I can get a word in as right. well. It's basically in those yeah. words. And, and that's kind of what, you know, and it was like, oh, okay, I understand that. And I went back to sleep and I was fine. But I mean, that's kind of it, you know. Yeah. That's the only time that our minds are, like you say, on empty of the monkey chatter and all that, completely empty to where God can actually come in and speak to us and we'll mm -hmm. hear him above all our mind chatter. That's right. So. And it reminds me of uh, when, I was, when I was young and we used to have church in my grandmother's house. Um, the same thing would happen to her. And um, she got a song once it was called In the Cool of the Day. And the cool of the day is those mid air, those mid hours. Right. And, you know, I can still remember her singing that. He speaks to me in the, in the cool, cool of, of the, the day. day. Yeah, so yeah. that is something because we are humans, we have that chatter around us so much that it, that kind of happens. But, too, I find that if I spend more time with him in my God room and in that intimate time, that I begin to hear his voice clearer. Yeah. And then he can break through during the day. But if I don't spend time with him, then yes, he does have to wake me up in the middle of the night more with dreams and things. But I think that is what is so important is that we spend that time alone because then uh, his voice becomes stronger in us and we are able to hear and because we are in tune with him more through the day, you know, then, then he will be able to talk to us more at three in the afternoon mm. or at midday. So I know that that helps me. The more time I spend with him, the more he's able to interact during waking hours. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, you know, the, the Bible says that, you know, he says, um, you know, I call my sheep and the sheep know my voice. And, you know, when you're trying to learn someone's voice, you know, the more you hear them, the more you're sensitive yes. to it, and especially with the Holy Spirit, because it's right. really the Holy Spirit that we're hearing and it's coming down to us. And, you know, the more that you abide in the Lord and the more that you spend the quality time with God and the more that you hear his voice mm -hmm. you know it, you're you're being more sensitive to the spirit 
So a lot of times if we do have a busy day during the day, right. you know, and we're and whatever, and you hear him whisper, because he never really, well, I've heard him yell yeah. and shout a few times, but for yeah. the most time, it's a, it's a small, quiet voice that comes out. Right. And if we're not that sensitive to the Spirit, we'll never hear it, mm -hmm. you know? And something I used to watch you, I, I'd watch you, when, when I would see you out on the little night and see you in your God room, sometimes I would just watch and kind of see how you interacted. Ah, spying on yes. me, I didn't know that, okay. And uh, I would ask you questions about that, you know how you go about that and you reflected to me something that I hadn't really done is that you sit there and you just begin to listen mm -hmm. it's just you're looking around and you're just listening where when I go to a prayer time I might be uh, asking for something talking to him a lot uh, it works better if I maybe sing a little bit but that helped me learn from that reply from you mm -hmm. that I don't have to be talking constantly. Right. I can sit and I can just be quiet and begin to learn how to listen. Like you're an artist and you had to learn how to see things right. in order to paint them correctly. And so that has ministered to me in the fact that I realized, okay, let me try that. Let me try just listening. And, you know, and sometimes that's the hardest thing for us to do, especially nowadays. I mean, you know, it's always been hard, I think, for people to <laughs> to shut up and right. listen, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I think nowadays it's even more because we're so used to filling every, every inch of our lives with computers mm -hmm. or music or, you know, or on the, on the phone talking to people or texting. I mean, right. it's like every minute has to be filled with something or we feel we're being lazy or not productive right. you know and you know the Lord is saying no I need the alone time you know just sometimes just sitting there I mean I've, I, there's been times and I've gone into um, you know the quiet place the, the God room that I call it um, there's times that I've gone in there and never heard a word from him yeah. and never spoke to him and I would be there for maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes and just having a cup of coffee and just looking at the scenery or whatever it is right. and Still, I would leave there refreshed just because, you, you know what it's like? I'll tell you what it's like. It's like, you know, they say having a really good friend mm -hmm. means you can be with somebody and you never have to say a word and you oh, still have a good time. That's and that's what it's like. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's, he's our Lord first. Mm -hmm. He's our King. You know, he is the Lord of Lord. But he's also our friend. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all, that one painting that I did of, um, of, of Jesus um, hugging the fellow, I mean, that's what that whole piece was all about, was the fact of showing he's not just a God that's off in a distance and untouchable. Right. And you, you know, you bow down to him and you worship and everything, but he's, you know, you can't right. approach him, whatever. That he is a friend too. Right. And I, and you know, to me, when I did that painting, it was like, I pictured when I leave here and when I go see him, that he's not gonna be just falling down on his knees, which I probably will do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, just falling down on his knees and say, Lord, and him just saying, you know, you know, well done or whatever, and you know, and bless me, whatever. But he's going to just run up to me like the prodigal son and just pick me up right. and just hug me like no end, yes. you know. And th and that's what I wanted to paint. And um, I and, think everybody's yeah. responded to that very well. Yeah. And and too with our prayer time, sometimes we feel like we need to orchestrate the whole thing. Orchestrate. We're so performance orientated mm -hmm. that we have to get out of that that thing of well, I've got to say this and this. I've got to cover everybody in prayer. I've got to cover 12 topics in my prayer time. I, yeah, oh, I yeah, performance, yeah, yeah. I'm orchestrating. Oh, yeah. And what you're saying and what I learned from you is about listening and allowing the Holy Spirit to orchestrate the conversation right. or just the infilling, how you said you can walk away refreshed. Right. You know, where I would, if I didn't cover a certain amount of people during a prayer time, I would walk away feeling guilty. Oh gosh, I forgot this person, this person. And that's not the way our relationship is with right. the Father. Yeah. So well, and, you know, and again, it's, it's a, you're spending time with the Lord, you know. It's not like a duty thing. Right. Like, oh, I've got to go here and I've got yeah. to do this. And if I didn't and do that, oh, I failed, whatever. And I felt you know? that way in yeah. the past. Yeah, oh, we're, yeah. we're so easy to condemn ourselves. It's, it's pathetic, actually, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, when when the Lord has forgiven everything, you know, it says that you know God has forgiven our right. sins and doesn't even remember them. 
Right. They're, they're gone. He's, he's like, you know, when Satan accuses us, he's going, what? I, I don't have a record of it. What are you talking yeah. about? You know, I don't That's remember true. nothing like that. Be, you know, but yet he tells us, and he's like, oh, yeah, I remember last week. Oh, I'm so sorry, Lord. And the Lord's going, sorry for what? Mm -hmm. I don't remember it, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't mean that we can just go do what we want to do, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, and e even that, it's not so much of a do and don't do sort of thing. Um, it's, it's more of, if you, if you really are a Christian, you really love the Lord, it's like loving anybody. Mm -hmm. You want to do stuff like that for them. Yeah. It's not a matter of, oh, well, you know, if you didn't do that, I guess you don't love me. God's not going to point his finger at you. Mm -hmm. But if you really love the Lord, you know, and you really care about him, as you do like anything that you really love, mm -hmm. you want to please him. Right. So it's not a matter, even if God says, oh, you don't have to do that, you'll do it anyway because you know that it makes him happy. And that's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, and you know, as you're speaking, I'm reflecting on my own children, my, my sons who are now grown. Um, there was some of the most intimate, wonderful times I have with them are the times where they just lean back upon me. We watch mm -hmm. a movie. I'll tickle their back or tickle their hair. And that just that time without saying a word, yeah, right, exactly. but being in the presence and feeling that vulnerability on both parts. That, that that son would release himself to me, oh, it's okay even though I'm grown, to lean back upon my mom, to let her touch my hair and to relax me, right. you know? And that's the same kind of atmosphere that you're talking about where you go and you, and you listen and you wait and you feel and you embrace the spirit without a word. And, and I don't know if it's women, but I struggle with being silent and, and with stop talking and just allowing his presence to come over me. So I, that's the things I've learned from you. And I've- and Well, and, and we're both learning. Like I said, you know, even for me, I mean, my mind is constantly going too, because I'm always thinking about 10,000 different things. You know, right. I, I do paintings, I do video, I do all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And so my mind is constantly, what can I do? What, what can I, because I love to create. Right. <laughs> I don't care what venue it's in. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's the same thing with me. It's, it really is difficult to sit down and not do anything and just, you know, mm -hmm. let your mind be, be totally blank and just let the Lord come in. Yeah, because I mean, like the Lord shows me right now, it's not about doing, it's about being in relationship. I mean, it's like, right, we're not right, exactly. doing a relationship, it's mm -hmm. not a school, it's not a teacher, it's, it's just being, being with me. He wants us to be with him. Well, and that's and that's what we're we're saying here today is yeah. that's that's really what the God room is all about. It's not so much a special room. I mean, we we have put aside right. our special room simply because you know yeah. um, it, it's it, we feel comfortable in just going there. It's very quiet. It's peaceful. There's no computers, no right. phones, whatever. It's just nothing there, so we can spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much a a, a place like a holy place like you used to have in the temples and stuff like that. Right. It's not that. It's just it's a quiet place for you to just spend time mm -hmm. with the Lord, just you and God, and to sit back and, and listen. You know, I mean, we, we tell God constantly with our prayers. You know, I mean, we, we do. When we, we pray, it's always, oh, Lord, I need this. Oh, Lord, I'm going through this and mm -hmm. yada, yada. But, you know, it seems like so many times we say that. It's like, oh, Lord, you know, help me with the finances. I can't make the part payment, da, 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 da. And then when we're all done, it's like, well, you know, thank you, Lord. Amen. And we get up and leave. Mm -hmm. And God said, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I didn't have a time to respond to right. you on that. Yes. You know, conversation is a two-way thing. You spoke to me, and now it's my turn. Mm -hmm. And you get up and you leave already. And, you know, this is our time of sitting back because we already said our prayers, we already said a lot of things, and just listen to what God has to say for us and what he has for us for that day, so. Yeah, and, and the one thing, you know, I was used to going at a prayer time is pleading, and now I've learned that it's more about proclaiming. Pro I can sit down and proclaim the word of God. I can find scripture mm -hmm. and speak those scriptures, the word of God out loud. And that can be a proclamation that sets forth an active nuance that the Lord sends out, rather than always being in a state of pleading. Um, we 
we as Christians have got into that frame of mind. Right. I'm here to plead my cause. I'm here to beg for this, to make intercession. But the word of God is clear that you, when you speak the word of God and speak the word out loud, this is something that's really helped me this year, is finding scriptures about a certain subject that I, my heart is drawn to, even if it's for my children, is that those scriptures, I will say their name in the scripture. Right. and proclaim that over them and I'm finding there is such a peace that comes over me when I'm able to do that you know instead of well, being it's, it's in being, a... It's, it's personalizing the, the thing it's mm -hmm. rather than you know when, when you're saying um, you know well well Lord you know bless the world and you know and have peace whatever that's sometimes they call that a shotgun prayer in other words, it's it's you're praying it, but it's you know it's the everything and everybody. Right, it's a shotgun thing. That, right. Where when you're saying you know Lord, you know be with my son and what and you know now you're narrowing it down to where you, instead of just being a shotgun, now you've taken fine aim on one particular point, mm -hmm. and that I think is going to be more effective, you know, especially in his life right. than if you just prayed for the whole family or something and you know well he's part of the family. Yeah. It's going to be you know I think it'll. I don't know if I could say that the Lord will, you know, do more than if you just pray for the whole family, but it definitely does bring him before the Lord. And that's, when I pray for my kids, it's the same thing. Matter of fact, I even say that a lot of times. It's, you know, Lord, I bring them before you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we're doing. We're praying. We're bringing that situation before him. Just like, you know, if you go to a judge or something or other, you go into court, you know, you're bringing things in front of the, oh, the yeah, judge just like, like that. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing is we're bringing this in front of the Lord and saying, Lord, here, I'm leaving this with you. You know, your judgment, and your, your wisdom is better than mine, and just tell me what to do because I know you know what to do. But you have to bring it in front of him mm -hmm. for him to see everything and say, oh, okay, well, in that case, yada, 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 and he'll tell you. Right, right. And here's two verses that go along with what we've been saying so far. In Psalms 37, 7 in the NIV, it says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And there's another verse that I, I just love. I think it's great. It's 1 Kings 19, 11 through 12. It's talking about when Elijah went up into the, the mountains to talk with God. The angel told him to go up into the mountains. And it says, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. I just think that's great. Yes. I do. I may really do. It's, you know, when you think of all the things that God could have, could have come to, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we think of, of God as being mighty and powerful, and He is. And, you know, He could come in the earthquakes and he could come in this big fire and say you know I'm the Lord and he could come in all of these things but when he came to Elijah you know Elijah was expecting him in the earthquakes and expecting him in the fire and expecting him in the wind and what he came to Elijah in was a small still voice and that's why you know when we talk about the God room and we, we mentioned mm -hmm. you know that we need that um, that quiet space it's so that we can hear God I mean, how else are you going to hear God? You already said that, you know, he's not going to come in the earthquakes. He's not going to come in the fire. When he comes to us, it's in that small, still voice. So we have to be in a quiet area. And again, it doesn't have to be really a particular room. I mean, we have a room set up, you know, that's, that's, that we like to call our God room. And, and it's because it's quiet and we feel very comfortable there. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be a room. I mean, it's like I, I said before, I mean, you know, sometimes my God room is in the car when I'm driving down the road. It's just me and God. I turn the radio down and it's just me and God. That's my God room, mm -hmm. you know, or we could be walking along the beach or something oh, where yes, it's just, yeah. you know, and you've had that. You know? Yes, yes. It, it's a, a personal place inside of us and in our hearts that we carry. Right. It's always a room that's open to the Lord and wherever we uh -huh. go, there you go and yield you know to that is that we do need to open that door and and have our hearts prepared you know come with pureness like a child to come before him and just spend that uh, quiet personal time with him right and so you know when, when we're asking you know 
for you to have your own, you know, God room. Um, if you have a place that's, that is quiet, you know, serene, and you can just get away from the computers and get away from the cell phones mm -hmm. and get away from, you know, people chattering, kids running around, whatever. Um, if it's a room, fine. If, it's, if it is someplace else in the middle of the woods, you drive and you just go walk in the woods with just, you know, nobody around, just spending alone time with the Lord. So you hear that small, still voice from God is what the God room is all about. And that's how he yeah. will talk to you. And it's so important because, you know, that's how we grow in the Lord, mm -hmm. is spending that quality time with, yeah. with God. You know? Yeah, because you know when I wake up in the morning, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to the Lord, but to listen to Him mm -hmm. and to follow His lead during that time. So I set that time aside in the morning. I don't, I don't go on the computer or the phone or anything like that because I don't want anything to hinder that initial waking up moment right. where preparing my entire day starts in the morning with the Lord. Because when I don't spend that time with Him. I'm not as empowered, I'm not as prepared mm -hmm. for any divine encounter that comes along, and I don't know what's on his heart, you know, for other More people that day, yes. or who I should minister to or talk, or talk to. So, you know, it's, it, is, it is a discipline. Uh, some people get up uh, a couple hours before they go to work in the morning to make sure that they have that time, but, you know, for me it's, it's upon waking. and. I really enjoy that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're making your own God room or, you know, spending that quiet time with, along with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, th that's what you do is just find a quiet space. Because again, it's not about a room and it's not about, you know, a particular place that, that you go to. It's spending quiet time with the Lord. And yeah. that's what the God room is all about. It's more like, like you were saying, it's more of a God space, if you will. Um, so. You know, we enjoyed spending some time with you, and, and thank you for listening, and we'll see you again. And until then, spend quality time alone with God in your God room so you can hear what God has for you. I'd like to share with you a few of the paintings the Lord had inspired me to create for you, His children.